it didn't have the endpoints. Okay, we're going to find the power series expansion for the function 2x to the fifth power over 9 plus x squared. And as we can see, this is just a rational function, right? So of course, we can utilize our best friend. And remember, for our best friend, we must have a 1 on the top. But this is a 2x to the fifth power. So let's look at this as 2x to the fifth power times another fraction. And for this fraction, we can have the 1 that we need on the top. And this is going to be the best friend part, which you tell us that we must have the 1 on the top. And now we do, right? And also, we must have a 1 right here. This was a 9. So what can we do? Well, from the 9 plus x squared, we can just factor out the 9, right? So let me put that down right here as 2x to the fifth power over 9. And I'll put down a parenthesis right here. Originally, we had this 9, but I factored it out. So now we just have the 1. And this is the 1 that we need, right? And then, the best friend says, we must have a minus, but this was a plus. But it's okay though, because plus is the same as minus negative, right? And earlier this was x squared, but then we factor out the 9. So now this right here we will get x squared over 9. And let me put down little parentheses right here, because this is going to be our new input for the best friend. And real quick, you can just distribute the 9. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times x squared over 9 is the x squared. And then negative times negative, we have the plus. So you see, that's all the algebra that we're doing, right? This is going to be the best friend part. This right here, let me just write it down for now. 2x to the fifth power over 9. For the best friend part, we can just put that into the summation notation. The series, as n goes from 0 to infinity, and then we will have the input raised to the nth power. That's what the best friend tells us to do, right? And that's how we can get the power series for this. Well, this right here is just the input. You see, we have the negative x squared, and then we'll put down the over 9, like that, okay? So, this right here is pretty much the form for the power series for that function. And also, we shall state the radius of convergence. And we know we have to have the absolute value of the input to be less than 1. This is what the best friend tells us to do. That's the input, so let's put that down right here. Negative x squared over 9. And now, this is pretty much the setup. The rest is just do the algebra and do the simplification. Let's focus on the form first, okay? So, let me write this down as 2x to the fifth power over 9, that's how it is, because we want to simplify this part. So, we still have the series as n goes from 0 to infinity. Inside here, we technically have three parts. Here is technically a negative 1, and we have a negative 1 raised to the nth power, so that's write it down as negative 1 to the nth power first, like this. And then next, we have x squared, and then raised to the nth power. In this case, we multiply the exponents, so we get x to the 2n power. And for the denominator, we just have 9 raised to the nth power, so we have this over 9 to the nth power, okay? And then, right here, we can multiply this inside, distribute that inside. And now, we'll just have the series, I'll take care of 9 later, okay? So as n goes from 0 to infinity, let me put down the 2 first, and then let me write down the negative 1 to the nth power. And this is x to the fifth power times x to the 2n power. In this case, we add the exponents, so we have x to the 2n plus 5, like that. And lastly, right here, this is 9 to the first power. We multiply this with that. So we will have 9 to the n plus 1 power, right? So this right here is it. That's the form for the power series for that, right? And now, let's try to figure out the radius of convergence. So first of all, we have this negative instead of the absolute value, so the negative doesn't matter. And likewise, the over 9 is just pretty much a constant. So we can write this as absolute value of just x squared inside of this, and then we have the over 9, okay? And then this is less than 1. 
From here, of course, we can multiply by 9 on both sides. So we have absolute value of x squared, and then this is less than 9 times 1, which is 9. Well, this is x squared inside of the absolute value. Technically, I cannot really take the square roots on both sides yet, because if I do that, the absolute value is on my way, right? But let me tell you, this is the same as saying absolute value of x, and then to the second power, and this is still less than 9. And let me just do a quick proof of this is actually the same as that. Well, let's look at the inside is x squared. And x squared, by definition, it means x times x, right? And this is still inside of the absolute value. Now, next, <laughs> right here, we have the absolute value of product. That is the same as the product of the absolute value. So I can write this as absolute value of x times absolute value of the x, OK? And now we have two of this same thing multiplying with each other. So of course, we can use the power for it. Absolute value of x and raised to the second power, OK? And this is still less than 9, of course. And the reason I want to do from here to here is because now I can legitimately take the square roots on both sides. And I can cancel the square and the square root. I will just have the absolute value of x left like this. I can do it this way because absolute value of x is always positive, right? And also, this is what we have. And when I do that, I do not need to change and do not need to worry about the inequality. We still have the less than, and of course, square root of 9. Everybody knows 3, just like that. So here we have absolute value of x is less than 3, right? From here, we know the radius of convergence is equal to 3. And that's pretty much it. And if the question was also asking to find the interval of convergence, well, we know the center is at 0, right? And the radius of convergence is 3. That means from 0, we can go to the left 3 times and go to the right 3 times, right? And remember, right here, we're just doing algebra with the best friend. Originally, the best friend for the interval of convergence, it didn't include the endpoints of the interval of convergence. And once again, because we're just doing algebra with our best friend, so in that case, we still do not include the endpoints of the interval of convergence. So with that being said, we will just have from negative 3 to positive 3, do not include, do not include the endpoints, the endpoints. And this right here is it. First of all, we have the form. Second of all, we have the radius of convergence. And then lastly, we have the interval of convergence. That's it.